I'm Michael Curcio with All Aerial Ag. And I'm Paul Curcio with All Aerial Ag. Today, we are going to be comparing two different agricultural spray drones. This is the XAG P150. And we're also gonna be looking at the Vector HD 580. Today, we are gonna be comparing these two drones to see which one is best for your operation. We are gonna be going over the specs of the XAG P150. Here, we have carbon fiber propellers we're on this teeter hinge for optimal maneuverability. We have these nice size motors, which are capable of 120 pounds of thrust each. These ESCs, which are conveniently located underneath the propellers so that you get a cooling effect while the drone is flying and you don't get overheating of the ESCs. <clears throat> we have right in the middle of the arm, this clamp opens up and the arm folds in for nice convenient storage. And these, this drone specifically has breakaway zones. So when you crash it, it uh, breaks in a nice, neat and orderly fashion and you can repair it for very minimal cost. We have a 1080p forward facing and low and downward facing camera with a headlight. We have one, two, three, four, five radars for a full 360 degree obstacle avoidance. We have an 18 and a half gallon tank. It comes with two batteries as opposed to the one battery that most drones come with today. It makes it a little bit lighter, easier to transport. You're not lugging around 40, 50 pound batteries all day. So I like that, makes it easier. Here we go. So today I'm gonna to be showing you the Vector HD 580. We've got the same carbon fiber propeller blades on here. The motors are considerably larger. We've got 167 pounds per motor for the thrust. ESCs are a lot larger as well. Same cooling effect from the blades. Uh, we've got the radars. So we've got the two on the back completely unobstructed. And then the large one up front that'll cover the front. It is completely 360 degree omnidirectional obstacle avoidance. A spray tank is also 18 and a half gallons and the nozzles are 7.9 gallons per acre. With the four nozzles on there, you get 10.5. The camera on the front also has a virtual gimbal, so it'll move around just like the P150, you just won't see it. And the spotlights on the front, great for nighttime flying, as well as the night vision that is equipped on that camera. And then lastly, we've got this battery. It's about 35 pounds, not too bad and we just place it right in here. It's front loading for a very easy setup. And then from here, we are gonna be showing you the overall operations, so route planning and the takeoff and flying of both of these drones and see what you think side by side. All right, these are the three devices that come with your XAG P150 that allow you to operate the drone. We have the RTK6 Pro, which is your positioning system. It gives you 0.1 meters of accuracy and it is a lot more safe and optimal than flying under GNSS, which would be your general satellites. We have the data link here, which allows all of the devices to communicate. That would be the remote, the data link, your internet, RTK and drone. And finally, we have the remote, which allows you to operate the drone and control it and plan routes and do whatever you need to do with your operation. Let's dig into the software that makes these drones run. So now that we have the drone and remote connected to each other, we can go and to our operations settings tab. Here we have our spraying settings. We usually like to keep it at about three gallons an acre for herbicide application, which is mostly what we do here. <clears throat> and then our droplet size, we usually keep it around 350, which is from medium to thick. And you can confirm that operation route is where you choose the flight height above crop, of course. So we usually run 10 to 12. This can go up to 40 miles an hour. That is the fastest drone on the market by far. The approaching route, so when you are entering a field, your altitude, I like to keep it a little bit higher in case there's fences and stuff that you want to go over. 26 miles an hour just to keep it safe. You don't want to be running into anything but that also goes up to 40. And then your safety points, which would be 
the way the drone enters the field. So it would be like that, and it's just gonna follow this yellow line into the field that you have chosen for it. And here is all the obstacle avoidance you wanna keep on. The real Terra Free 3D flight is only for steep 90 degree pitches like orchards and stuff on the sides of mountains, so we don't have to worry about that. And then the advanced settings is just low liquid return home and auto drain mode, which we like to drain the drone ourselves, so we don't keep that on. And that is all. And then you are ready to start your operation once you have all those settings plugged in. So now we're gonna be looking at the HD 580's remote. This is the main screen. When you wanna plan a field, you just click on plan field, remote planning, and you're gonna to wanna to switch over to map planning. That's gonna give you this crosshair. As you can see, that's where we're standing right now, and that's where our drone is located. And right now we're on boundary point, so we're gonna click add point. You're gonna see that one single point right there. And then we add that second. And as soon as you add that third point, you're gonna notice that it auto plots that route and it'll show you your spacing and how the route's gonna be laid out. So now we've got a full square. And let's say you've got some boundaries. Luckily, we've got a pretty open field. Same idea, you can go with that round obstacle and add that in there and you can adjust the size of that. And then you've got the polygonal obstacle and all these other non-application areas. So if you want a, a no spray zone, you're going over to a different property or crossing over a fence line. And then say we're done with that, all we gotta do is click save. It'll ask you to give a name and what kind of crop we've got. We're just gonna save it how it is right there. And then now, if we wanted to divide the, the plot, so it's gonna be too small to divide it, but you can split fields in half. You can create new fields from here or edit it however you want. We're going to invoke it. And right before we tell it to take off, it's going to ask us that same thing. We've got the spray dosage. We're going to be at three gallons an acre. Application is at 30 miles an hour. That's about max speed. And we can choose our atomization. It also goes from about 50 to 500 microns. We're going to keep that about the same and this is the relative crop altitude so maybe we'll keep that at about 12 feet so that'll be all for those settings and then all we got to do is upload it and as soon as we upload it, it'll be ready to take off So in conclusion, we have the XAG P150 and the Vector HD580. They have the same spray tank and similar output when it comes to out in the field. But however, the P150 does go about 10 miles per hour faster, which is very nice. Um, we have the HD580, which I think has a little bit better deposition and you can see the swath a little bit more clearly and you get a better coverage from this drone. Uh, so it really depends on what you're looking for. If you want speed for row crop and, and uh, high output acreage, the XAG is your drone. If you want nice, clean deposition, even swath and pasture work, then the Vector is the way to go for you. Once again, this is Michael Curcio with All Aerial Ag. Don't forget to like, review, comment, and subscribe.